Sandra, Hi. how are you? Uh, well, I've been looking over my left shoulder, but I'm okay. Anyone following you? No, I don't think so. John, if you weren't helping me, I don't know what I'd be doing. Cheer up. Almost time. Well, I checked upstairs. Kim has the kids packed and ready to go. Darling, I'm not so sure that this is a good time to be away. Why? What's wrong? Well, when I got home earlier, Tina was in here in the middle of a terrible argument with Maria. Maria? What, what the hell was she doing here? What she always does. She makes people miserable. This time she's browbeating Tina into giving court a divorce. Well, I hope you showed her the door. Yes, yes, of course I did. Problem is, Tina was very upset after she left, and I tried to calm her down, and... I told her that she wasn't the only one who had been singled out by Maria, that Maria had been just as cruel, if not more so, to me. You mean you told her... I told her everything. And I have done nothing since then but think that I've made a terrible mistake. What if Tina goes and tells Cord everything about his mother? Sweetheart, there's nothing we can do about that now. I just wish I had kept my big mouth shut. You have a very beautiful mouth. And your heart and soul ain't too bad either. Honey, hmm. look, we have done everything we could to protect Cord. Mm -hmm. Has it made Maria a better person? Uh, far from it. Has it made anyone any happier, including Cord? No, but he's going to be totally devastated when uh, he hears the story no. from Tina. That young fellow has more strength than he even knows about yet. Maybe it's time we stop protecting him and let him meet the truth face to face. Peter's just arrived. I'll go fill him in. Excuse me. Thanks, Matt. Uh, honey, you, you, you sure you're up for all of this? Dad, I would not miss this for the world. Uh, you don't have to pretend with me. I can see the way you keep staring over at that table. Dad, she is just a client. Look, I have told you, John and I have learned to separate business from pleasure. No problem. Excuse me, Robert. Uh, folks, I am terribly sorry, but we are having a private party in here, so if you don't mind, could I move you into the restaurant? Free drink on me. What do you say? Great, thanks. Robert, Gary, please, let's get these barstools out of here right away. Thanks, guys. Hey, Asa, so glad you could make it. And so nice to know you don't hold a grudge against me for beating you out of the hotel. I am here for a friend, and that's for you, Holden. Enjoy your little victory while it lasts. Max, I have to speak to you. Well, be my guest, ma'am. You are welcome to him. Gabrielle, what is it? You said that you'd help me. Well, I need your help now. I need it more than I ever did in my life. Calm down, relax, take a deep breath. Tell me what's wrong. I'll try. I'll try. You see, Maria, shh, everybody hide. She's going to be here in a minute. Wait, come on, hide. Quick. Yes, yes, Gabrielle, I am sorry, but this is going to have to wait just a second. See, I'm the owner here now, and somebody's got to run things. All right. You heard the lady. Hi. I'm a little too old to play hide-and-seek. Asa, will you get down here and shut up? Come on. Uh, Sandra, would you excuse me for just a minute? Uh, yes, of course, John. Oh, I'm so glad you could join us. <laughs> <laughs> Are we too late? Oh, no, 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 hurry. They're behind the bar. Okay, everybody, she's here. Now get down, quick. Donna, I looked all over this dress, and I don't see a spot on it. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I guess it's just the bad light in my car. Oh. Now, listen, I've got a million things to do. You come to my house, you tell me to get dressed, but we have to come here for a drink. What is it? Well, I told you that it was something really special, right? Mm-hmm. You are wearing one of my finest designs when you present your credentials to the King of Mandora. Mm. But there's just one little bit of ornamentation that you just can't go without. Jewelry. Oh, no, something much more valuable. I... Dorian! Dorian, may I have a word with you, please? Max, a word? What is it? Surprise. Surprise! <laughs> oh, you didn't. Of course we did. You didn't think that we'd let you leave without a special goodbye. As a matter of fact, I thought that you were. Oh, I guess we really fooled you, didn't we? Yes, you did. <laughs> Wanda. I mean, you with that lefty and whatever. I was ready to strangle you. Okay, well, I hope this makes up for it. 
because I know you're supposed to give fruit, that that's traditional and everything, but I thought that maybe this would be more reminiscent of America and everything. <laughs> Potato shit. Yeah. Oh, hot dogs. Hot dogs. And, oh, the hot dogs to go with. <laughs> Oh, honey, I just, I, would you hold on to that? I think I'm going to need both hands to look oh. for a hanky. Allow me. Hey, sir. You, oh, big. You know, honey, you. <laughs> you may not have been my best assistant, but I'll tell you, honey, you were the sexiest and the most interesting. Ah, oh, would you put that on my resume so I can show it to the King of Mandora? It just might help. I want to hug all of you. I really do. Except I also want to murder you. I hate surprise parties. Don't blame us. It was Cassie's idea. Do you forgive me? I mean, for the way that I acted, really forgive me. I forgive you if you forgive me. Of course I do. Well, you are the most wonderful terrific daughter anybody could ever ask for. I had a good teacher. You're the best mom any girl could ever have. Oh. Now, I want you to stay right there, both of you. Oh, it's Mr. Uh, Peacemaker. Uh, he's <laughs> Listen, tell your father not to be so smug, okay? I mean, we basically <laughs> made our peace without his interference. Yeah, I think well, you better sure. tell him, Mom. Okay. <laughs> Yes, you told us so. Yes, you did, and thank you. I have no more lectures, no more sage advice. Well, you know what you want, kiddo. Knock him dead in Mandora. That goes double for me. John. John, you were so rude to me in your office. And you didn't even give me a hint you were involved in anything like this. Well, now I can say what I couldn't say then. Dorian, I, I would have given anything not to hurt the the classiest lady I've ever met in my life. I suppose if I had any class, I would tell you that you're not so bad yourself. Take care of yourself, John, but most of all, you take care of my daughter. You be good to her, or so help me, I will come back and... I don't know why I'm being so sentimental. Well, you're not the only one, Dorian. Oh, Vicky. Vicky, Vicky. You know, we're getting ready to leave on a yes. trip of our own, but we couldn't leave without saying uh, that we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we should have one more fight. Would only be fitting, right? <laughs> no, no more fights. I'm not even going to tell you that you should uh, let Tina live her own life, <laughs> make her own mistakes. <laughs> Thank you for sparing me that. <laughs> I have to tell you, though, Dorian. I'm going to miss you terribly. <laughs> Landview's going to be a pretty damn dull place without you. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast. Oh, good idea. Oh, dear. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra, thank you for waiting. Mm. Of course. Would you like me to introduce you? Uh, no, I don't want to spoil the party, John. Well, come on, you're a friend as well as a client. And I think you should stay and have a good time. Well, no, the party's over for me. We've got work to do. Oh, what are we doing? Well, I'd like to go over to your apartment and take a look at that front door lock. Maybe go through the apartment and see if I can find any clues. Uh, wherever this guy is that's after you, I want to nail him. We can talk now. Not here. We need to go somewhere that's more private where no one can hear us. Would you mind driving me back to Delilah's studio? Uh, yeah, I guess it's okay. Looks like everything's under control here. Come on. I'll make it short and sweet. Words cannot possibly describe this lady. Perhaps the effervescence in this champagne comes as close as anything to catching her spirit. <laughs> well, let's lift our glasses, look the lady in the eye, Tell her from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, Dorian. Here, here, here. 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 Coming. Hold on. Tina, my goodness, I didn't expect to see you so soon. Don't 
don't tell me for once in your life you've made an intelligent decision. May I come in? Uh, of course. I knew you weren't a complete bimbo head. So, you uh, decided to give court a divorce, Tina? That is a very wise decision. Well, if you're finished gloating, I have something I think you'd like to know. Please. If you dare to breathe a word of this to court, then I'm going to have to tell them a little story myself. This little story all about sweet little Allison Perkins and the witch that she had as an accomplice. Now, who on earth could you be talking about? I know all about it, Maria. I know how you tried to convince Clint that Vicky was still Nikki. You tried to destroy our entire family. How dare Victoria Buchanan meddle in this affair? I also happen to know because she told me the court has no idea how rotten his mother is. At least he doesn't yet. Are you threatening me? No. No, I don't stoop as low as you do. I'm just giving you a little advice. If you don't tell Cord about Al, then I will be able to spare Cord the truth about his mother. Tell him, Tina. Go ahead. Look, if you don't think I will... I said tell him. You see, whatever I may have done to Vicky pales next to what you did to Kate and Cord and Max and Gabrielle and whoever else cares about that baby. What I did, I did for love. <laughs> That's a good song, Tina. Only it's not going to play in Landview. Cord may never forgive me for my sins, but he's going to understand because he knew how much I loved Clint. And yes, yes, he is going to find out that I helped Allison return Jessica to her mother. But you, you, Tina, you stole a baby from its rightful parents and tried to pass it off as your own. Now, you know, Cord is not going to ever, ever forgive you for that. Fine, if I lose Cord, then you are going to lose him, too. You have already lost him, Tina. And you are about to lose Al and Vicky and anybody else that you claim to love because it's over. You're bluffing. Go ahead. I want you to call Cord and tell him that you are on the way to the Caribbean to give him a fast and quick divorce. Yes. Listen, Letty, you talk real tough. But you're just as afraid of losing Cord as I am. And you are not going to push me around anymore. You have lost your last chance, Tina, because if you won't call him, then I will. Oh, no, you won't. Ow! You know what? <laughs> Ever since you have come into my life, you have been nothing but trouble. You know, if I, if I put my hands around your neck and squeeze the miserable life out of you, half the world is going to thank you. Position, eh? Well, I must admit it's been quite a few years since I was propositioned by a handsome young man. <laughs> well, come on, Elizabeth. You're still a very stunning woman. And I, for one, can't wait to read your memoirs. Unfortunately, Kate, there's not a man alive who can compare to your grandfather. Which is why I never... Uh, well, yes, well, you're not here to discuss me, are you? Uh, your granddaughter was kind enough to extend an invitation to me, Elizabeth, uh, on behalf of Sanders Chemicals. She Grand said it only requires your approval. Patrick needs a laboratory at the plant. Elizabeth, I was so close to finalizing the formula for the burn compound. I know if I spend a little more time on it, I can come up with a product that's going to help people all over the world. It's admirable that you still retain your enthusiasm and uh, lofty ideals, Patrick. But I'm afraid a lab of Sanders Chemicals is quite out of the question. Can I get you a drink, Max? I'm sure Delilah wouldn't mind. No, thank you. What I would like is for you to start talking again. You clammed up as soon as we got in the car. Well, it's a little difficult for me to go from suddenly not speaking to you then to confide in you. We opened up the lines of communications this afternoon. Let's not stop. And besides, you have got me worried about you. I guess I've been a little unfair to you. It's obvious you have a very kind heart. And you must care about me a little, otherwise you wouldn't have seeked me out. Of course I care about you. And whatever we've been through, I still have a lot of affection for you. Max, I believe I'm in some kind of danger. 
But I don't know from whom, and I don't know where it will come from. I am giving you your last chance, Tina. If you won't call Cora, then I will. No, you won't. Give me this. You! But listen, you will. You have been nothing but trouble since the first day I met you. You know what? If I put my hands around your neck and strangle the middle of a lifetime, if you I'd be doing the world of... You're gonna do stab me, you little witch! I will have you arrested. You just remember, if you try to tell Court about Al, I'm gonna tell him. Everything that you did to Vicky, you'll do and you'll lose. You know why, Tina? Because that's what you are, a loser! Paul, what's going on in there? Open the door, it's four. The lock was jimmied all right. Oh, it's okay, Sandra. I already made sure no one was hiding in there. You want to see if anything's missing? Frank doesn't keep any money here, but uh, the only thing of value would be my jewelry, but I'll, I'll check. It's a handkerchief, and it has blood all over it. Where was it? Right over there on the floor, like it had been dropped accidentally or thrown. You didn't cut yourself, obviously. What about Frank? I haven't talked to Frank since yesterday afternoon. Frank didn't sleep here last night? No, he called and said he had a hundred things, details to work out. He's opening the club tomorrow night, you know. Let me get this straight. Frank didn't come home last night, and the front door locked just happened to be Jimmy. <sighs> come on, Sandra, this is a little bit too much. I mean, if it wasn't for those other incidents, but... Is there something you're not telling me? Because if there is, I think it's time you open up. Now look, you said that Frank had a jealous streak. What else should I know about? He can be violent. Sometimes uncontrollably. But I don't think that qualifies him as a suspect, John. I mean, we've had our scenes, yes, but uh, it was a long time ago. Well, why don't you tell me about it? He had a partner for a while in California, a very attractive man named Reed. Uh, we became friends who adored each other. But Reed developed uh, something of a crush on me. He was only a friend to me, and when Reed told me how his feelings were growing, I said, no, stop. I told him I was devoted to my husband. And Frank got the bark. He thought it was a two-way thing and said I was encouraging Reed or giving him some kind of signal. Where's Reed now? I don't know. I haven't seen him since the partnership dissolved. Sandy, are there other men that Frank gets jealous over? Any man who's particularly nice to me. You know what? I'm shocked and yet, yet I'm not shocked. When I couldn't find you in Argentina when your grandmother was being so evasive, I got a little nervous. I, uh, I wonder what happened to you. Really? I mean, what were you thinking? I don't know. I'd, I'm not sure. It was uh, kind of an instinctive thing. I, uh, did you feel you were in any sort of danger or? Well, I went away, partly because the police insisted that there might be more money or assets from my father's cocaine trade. And they figured you knew where they were. Yes. But eventually they realized I didn't. Otherwise, I never would have been able to leave the country and come here. And what happened then? You think you were followed, or...? No, I, I don't think so. Max, you know that my grandmother had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But I never told you, and I never properly explained her circumstances. You see, we were at church, and we left early. She went on home. I went to the pharmacy to fill up her prescription. And when I came through the door... The place was ransacked, and she was on the floor in the middle of her attack. Hey, take it easy. It's all right. I, um, 
I went over to her. But she was gesturing behind me, and there was this man, and he had his face covered, and he just threw me out of the way, and he left. Did your grandmother know who he was? No, I don't think she recognized him. I didn't. But there was nothing missing, Max. He didn't take anything. No matter what he came to find, he didn't find it. Well, I'm not going to believe that was a random break-in. No. I didn't speak to Abuela until right before she had her heart attack that killed her. Mm-hmm. Her last words to me were not to trust anyone. There were no, no names, no details? Sounds like she had more information, doesn't it? Yes, I know. But we'll never know that now. That's, uh... That's when I left Buenos Aires, and I, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't leave any forwarding address. I just came straight here, and I felt fine until lately. Why? What happened to change that? Uh, nothing. Uh, mainly just a feeling, a fear that I brought with me. At any rate, I thought I should tell you. I had to tell someone. Well, I'm glad you chose to tell me. And now we are going to tell the local police. No. No, Max, we can't do that. Oh, Tina, will you open this door? Well, Tina, should we both tell him what we know and destroy him together? Oh, of course. Thank goodness you hear your mother's here. out of control. Me? Look what that witch did. She slashed me with those scissors. What? What? She was strangling me. I was just trying to defend myself. What the hell is the matter with you two? What? I don't believe this. It's like you two are just plain crazy. <laughs> It's not enough that I'm having to give you up. She's trying to make me pay in every way she can. I am concerned about her prolonging this divorce. Well, she's crazy. The hell I am. Oh, yes, she is. You want proof? Fine, I'll give you all the proof you need to see just exactly what your mother has become. Venice has one of the finest laboratory facilities in the country. No, indeed it does, Kate. But it's working to full capacity. There's simply no lab space available. Especially a private one, uh, which I assume Patrick would need. Well, of course, but I don't need a large one. A small one would do just fine. I'm so sorry. There's nothing open. Well, I'm sorry, but I happen to know that there are a bunch of piddly projects going on over there, as well as a few major ones, and someone could easily be bumped. Kate, look, I don't want to be the cause of that. It won't be any problem. You seem to be under the impression that we give labs to scientists just to fool around in at our expense. No project is piddly. But most of them can't be as important as Patrick's burn formula. Look, I've got an idea. Why don't I agree to share a space with another scientist, and I'll work on my projects only at night? Yes, well, I, I doubt that would be possible either. As you must know, most scientists demand privacy, their own facilities, and have no wish to share with outsiders. Patrick is practically family. Not to the Sanders scientists, my dear. Well, then maybe you should just tell them that he is there with your blessing. And furthermore, I'm sure if any of these scientists knew that he was in prison for five years, that... Kate, please. My dears, the solution is obvious. Patrick, simply find lab space in a private facility, and I will be most happy to pay the rent, as well as for any supplies or even assistance you might need. Well, thanks, Elizabeth, but I'm not after your money. You know that there isn't a lab space in the East that has the the uh, equipment that your company does. So I assume that you just think my formula is not worth pursuing. And therefore, it must be a waste of your precious space since I won't be on your payroll. And that'll diminish your rather substantial profits. Patrick, that's... Patrick, wait a minute. Don't leave, please. What the hell was that all about? Those are the most flimsiest excuses I've ever heard in my life. It is true, nonetheless. And whether you agree or not, it is clear to me that keeping Patrick at a distance from this family is necessary. Why? Because of his love for you. He might very well interfere with your relationship with Cor. Graham, that is absolutely ridiculous. We will be working at the plant, not in my living room. And besides, he knows what the situation with Cord is. He knows that I love him and that I intend on marrying him as soon as the divorce comes through. I know what I'm doing, Kate. Please just trust me. I don't get this. You see, you once adored Patrick. You were dying for him to join the firm. And now when Sanders Chemical has so much to offer him, you turn him away. And he has even more to offer you. He is fiercely independent. He'll never join the firm. Oh, oh, I get it. And you're afraid that the burn formula will be credited to Patrick London and not to Sanders Chemical. I resent that accusation. 
The issue is settled. No, Grams, it's not settled. Why can't we tell the police? Tell them what, Max? That I feel I'm in danger from a man I never recognized in Buenos Aires? Well, at least we can alert them in case any trouble comes along. No, Max, please. Later, if something happens, but not now. All we can do right now is hope that the danger will never materialize. And I felt I had to tell you, just in case I suddenly needed you, you'd understand why. All right, I'll go along with it, but only because you're not in, a, in any immediate danger. But I do insist on one thing. You're going to move into my hotel so I can keep tabs on you, all right? You can stay there free. Now, I realize it's a big sacrifice. I you. don't want your pity or your charity, Max. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. I do. A lot of that residual anger. But I'm working on it. And, uh... You're right, residual is the right word. And thank you, I'd, I'd like very much to move into the Vernon Inn. But I'd like to pay for my own room. Mm-hmm, but it is now the Holden Towers. You see, I've got a new sign I'm about to have erected, and I spent a small fortune on matchbooks and stationery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to rename the place. It's amazing how you've recovered after your loss of the ranch in Buenos Aires. Well, there never really was any kind of loss. I, uh, except for the loss and change of dreams. I sold the ranch and I made money on it. And now I intend to make a lot of money as a hotel proprietor. And I'm sure you will. Everything you touch turns to gold. Unlike myself, it tarnishes beneath my fingers. Well, I can't say it's always been like that for me. And it's certainly not that way in certain aspects of my life. Such as Tina. Don't worry, Max. I'm not going to fall apart on the subject. I finally realized that you do... Love her. <laughs> yeah. At the same point in time when I'm starting to realize that I can never have her love. I'm trying to get over her, Gabrielle. She has made it very clear to me that even after she divorces Cord, she's not going to give up on him. She figures sooner or later he's going to realize Kate is just a substitute. And I figure that kind of thinking is just going to bring a lot of pain in the years to come. And I don't really care that much for pain. So I'm just going to cut all the strings as fast as I can. Go ahead, Tina. Say anything you want. But then it's my turn to talk about you. Look, I don't want to hear a damn word from either one of you. Now, I'm just about had it with both of you. It's like you're a couple of out-of-control kids here. Cardetto, I am only trying to protect you. Ma, I have told you a million times I do not need your protection. Now, I can handle the situation on my own. Thank you very much. And as for you, canceling your lawyer and firing him at the last minute is not going to do anything to I, stop... I got another one. Ma, how you doing? Do you need a doctor to take no, a look at that? No, 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 honey, bunch. It's, it's not that bad. Lord, Tina, what are you... Oh, she was trying to strangle me. I was just trying to protect myself till I could get out the door. Oh, sure. Tell him another lie, just Tina. stop it, all right? But look, I, I don't want either one of you guys to get together again, to be in the same room, or to even call each other on the phone. Do you understand me? Ma, Tina is the mother of my child, and I don't want you treating her like this. You want... And you, Tina... Next time my mom wants to see her grandson, I will take care of it, all right? That way you will not even have to deal with her. Fine. Fine. Now, what about this new lawyer of yours? What's his name? Jeff McGrath at that, that new legal clinic. In fact, you can have your lawyer call him right away so you see what she says about my trying to stall the divorce. It's not true. Oh, well, if she would have gotten a divorce in the Caribbean, we wouldn't have to go through all this nonsense. Well, I want to handle this thing in the States so there's no problems with it later on in the future, all right? Well, actually, you're right, because she probably would have managed to find a loophole somehow. You stop it! Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Briggs. He is. One moment. Of course. It's a draw for yeah, now, Tina. Olivia. But I will win eventually. Yeah. You know, you really are a monster. I never now, realized uh, that winning means more to you than anyone else. Yeah, we'll. Cordetto, I'm sorry this got so out of hand, but she just infuriates me. I just want it to stop, all right, Ma? Because you are both infuriating me. I was just thinking about something. Good. You need to be thinking clearly. Uh, if you answer me straight, I promise mm. if you say yes, I won't automatically think that Frank's decided that he wants you dead. But in these fits of jealousy that he goes through, does... Does he ever physically hurt you? No. No, he's never done that at all. That, I swear to you, is true. All right. I believe you. 
Let me ask you another question, though. Psychologically, does he ever scare you enough that you think that he might hurt you? Before the partnership was dissolved, Reed and I went golfing with some other people, people that Frank knew. But after the golf date, I went to the movies. That's something I never do, alone. And Frank thought that you were in the motel with Reed. That's right. Hello, darling. Where you been, Sandra? I went to a movie. A movie? Mm -hmm. I thought you went to the country club. I did go to the country club, but after that... You went, went somewhere to... with Reed. No, I went alone. I went to a movie. Funny, I couldn't find him after you left the club I either. I was not with Reed. Now, please, you've got to stop doing this, Frank. I love you. I love only you, and I would never think about having an affair with anybody else. But please, at least give me credit. Certainly not with his partner. Oh. The Imperial Hotel. So that's where you've been carrying I on. I have huh? not been carrying on. You don't smoke, but read, Stop it! I was with Linda. Linda and I had lunch there last week. So you did. And you went to the movies alone today. Oh, yes. This is the story, Sandra. Oh, it. First. I will make Reed pay for this betrayal. Then you. The two of you are not going to make a fool out of me. <sighs> Sandra, I'm sorry. And later he found out, though, that Reed had an appointment with a liquor distributor. And he was very apologetic. And he begged my forgiveness. Oh. Well, well, what's this? Hello, darling. Uh, John was... Are you okay? Uh, I was frightened. I came home and the door was jimmied open and John was good enough... What has John got to do with the door? Why did you call me? Well, sweetheart, he's I been very busy. I just came by to so... check it out. And did you figure out what happened? No, not yet. Well, then let me fill you in. I came home this afternoon and realized I left my keys at the club. Sandy wasn't home. And I was just too exhausted to drive back. So, I busted the lock. In the process, I managed to scrape up my hand pretty good. Just in case you think that bloody handkerchief means anything. Yeah, I did wonder about that. Well, now I guess there's nothing to worry about anymore. So, unless you're a locksmith, too, you can go on about your normal business. <clears throat> well, I guess that takes care of everything, explains everything. John, thank you very much, and I'm... I apologize for panicking. It's no problem, Sandra. So, Frankie, I, uh, I hear your club's about to open tomorrow. Yeah, if I can get enough help. Still need a few cocktail registers. You know anyone who might, uh... No. No, I, I don't. Good luck to you. Thanks. Hey, stop by the club sometime. Yeah, I'll do that, Frank. Goodbye, Sam. Well, I should be getting back. I'll drop you off at the waterside Inn. You can pack, and I want you ready to move tomorrow. You know, you really are a very nice man. You always were. Mm -hmm. I guess I just had a problem handling my first love affair. Well, like the old saying goes, you always fall in love with the first one. You discover the pleasures of lovemaking, and you believe it's love, whether it is or not. And if you recall, it was my decision I not know. to... Yes. I know. I was busy making a career out of... Being mature. Mm -hmm. Do you remember our first riding date when I wore my very English riding habit? <laughs> when you had that silly little belt, velvet cap, whatever it was, I could hardly get on the horse. I was laughing so hard. And I was so embarrassed because uh -huh. I was trying to impress you with my refinement. Oh, yeah, you tried to get me to believe that you were born and raised in London. You were part of the royal family. All right, I have you to thank to pull me through that phase. I didn't see that smile in Argentina for the past year, and I haven't seen it since here. It's great to see it back, and I'm going to keep that on your face. But first, we're going to get out of here, and I'm going to keep you out of danger. Come on. And nothing since. No. I mean, is that outrageous behavior or what? Well, it certainly doesn't make any sense. 
Look, I know my grandmother has faults, but I, I don't get this. She once adored Patrick, and now, rather than having sympathy and goodwill towards him, she's turned on him. I know. Her whole attitude is very puzzling. It's almost as if she's saying, I have this huge company, tons of lab space, but I don't want Patrick to use any of it. Right, as if he purposely got himself thrown in jail and tortured for five years, and now he's got to be punished for it. Hmm. And then she threw this nonsense at me about Patrick interfering with Cord and me. Any possibility of that? Hey, I'm just asking. I mean, there was a time when you built your entire life around Patrick. Yes, too much so. But then Patrick disappeared and it all dissolved. And now with Cord, there's more space. And somehow I think the relationship is healthier between Cord and me than it was with Patrick. All right, but you know, in the long run, you and Patrick do have a lot more in common. What are you doing then? Nothing. I'm just, I'm just checking on my daughter's heart and mind. That's all. I'm allowed once in a while, yes? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling a bit defensive. I know. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will make some inquiries into this lab situation. I will confront your grandmother, and I'll find out what's really behind her refusal to let Patrick in the door, okay? Thank you. You are wonderful. Hmm. Mm. That's downright mean on Elizabeth's part. What's happened? I don't know, Cindy. Unless she found out what we did with the Sanders stock five years ago. Uh, no, no way. There's no way. She's been totally warm and open to me. But the minute she found out that you might be alive, she's been so cold about you. I just don't understand it. Well, obviously, she preferred it if everyone thought I was dead. Well, maybe you hit it. Maybe she sees you as formidable competition for her entire company. Oh, I fully intend to be. Kate was furious. I got so angry, I had to leave. Oh. Well, I wish you called me. I sat here brooding about you all night. Why? Patrick, honey, you're my brother. You've been going through hell for the past five years, only to come out and find the world a different place. With Kate taken. Momentarily. Well, Cindy, you just didn't think I was going to back off and hand Kate over to the cowboy, did you? Yeah, but she loves Cora, okay? They're going to be married soon. If she does, she will soon realize what a big mistake it is. Good morning, boss. Good morning, Cassie. So how the rest of the party for your mom go? Oh, it was fun, but then toward the end, of course, it got pretty sad. I miss her already. Yeah. Was she still upset that I cut out early? No, I think she's used to you cutting out on her. I was the most upset. Why? Because uh, Sandra turned out to be the client I was seeing. So what happened with the lock? Well, it turns out the lock was Jimmy'd after all, but by Frank. Apparently he forgot his keys. The whole thing did provoke Sandra into telling me, though, that Frank has a temper which borders on violence. Well, what has she done to provoke it? Not a thing, except act friendly towards men. But let me tell you, I saw a little bit of his jealousy. He walked in and saw the two of us together, and uh, he tried to hide it, but you could tell he was furious that she called me about the lock. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that Frank knows you've taken her on as a client? No. He just knows that she called me about the lock. John, you don't think he's smart enough to put it all together, especially if he is the one who wants her killed? He's not even aware that she knows anything. John, you don't think Bradshaw didn't get on the phone and explain to Frank why he suddenly can't work for him anymore? You just made our job that much more difficult by alerting Frank that you and Sandra both are suspicious of him. That is, of course, unless Sandra's just making this whole thing up. Come in. Tina, what are you doing here? Where's Delilah? Uh, she's uh, downstairs. What's the word on? Yes, look, if this is about Maria Roberts, I'm as sorry as you are. That's hard to believe. Gabrielle, I can't believe of all people to confide in, you choose the Wicked Witch of the East. She says she's going to tell Cord everything if I don't give, her, give him a divorce immediately. Yes, I know. I know she told me. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. I was so upset when she told me she couldn't keep her secret. Oh, yeah, she can't keep a secret. You don't know this woman. She can never keep a secret. And, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night last night and realized that she's even going to tell him after the divorce. I tell you, Gabrielle, this whole secret is going to come out all because Maria is so evil. Look, don't worry about Maria. I explained to her that if anyone found out that little Al is my son, that his life could be in danger. What? Al is in danger? And you 
have no idea who it might be? None. That's why I finally broke down and told Max. But not about the baby, of course. Just that there was a threat. But you're not sure who the threat was to. If it's by you or, or Al. Well, maybe. I mean, the abuela could have been confused. I don't know, Gabrielle. Your father's partners are probably just as ruthless as he is. I mean, if there's drug money involved, I'm sure they're not going to hesitate about using Al or going after you. I know, but I don't know anything. And they never knew I was pregnant. Are you sure? I mean, you must have told your father that you were, didn't you? Yes, I told him, but he was so ashamed he wouldn't have told anyone, believe me. I can't believe this is all we need. I mean, everything is so confused, and now our baby is in danger. Gabrielle, this, this makes up my mind. You can never claim this baby. Never. And Maria has got to be stopped. Look, I can't believe it. Out of all people, you decided to confide in Tina. Maria. I didn't know what Maria was like. I had no idea. Besides, she already knew. I only confirmed things for her. Well, how could she have found out? Do you, do you remember two days ago when we had that argument in the library at Lanfair? Well, she was outside on the terrace listening at the doors. Woman is amazing. Do you know what she's already done to my sister? I... Never mind here. I think we've got a little time. Because I, I don't think she's going to do anything until after the divorce. And I've got something on her, and she's too afraid of losing cord. What are you talking about? Never mind. Look, you're just going to have to trust me. Tina, remember, I did that before. I know you did, Gabrielle, but listen to me. Maria does not give a damn about Al. Do you understand that? But I love him. I love him so much, I'd give up my life to protect that baby, and I am going to protect him. I will. I'll find a way. What do you have in mind? I'm not sure. I am convinced that Kate is making a mistake. Tina and Kate are so different, just as Cord and I are different. I mean, Tina was Cord's first choice and I was Kate's, so therefore you can understand what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I see what you mean, but Patrick, don't count on it. I'm telling you this because I love you and I don't want to see you suffer any more than you have. Cindy, it's because of Kate that I'm alive right now. Didn't you realize that she might carry on with her life, date, maybe fall in love? Of course. But I couldn't dwell on that thought, otherwise it might have destroyed me. I had to go on thinking that she waited. I mean, so she didn't. So she's human. She got... Uh, lost faith, fell in love. But now I am back. Cindy, time is going to prove me a prophet. Hi. I came here hoping Cindy would be able to tell me where you were. Hi, hon. I'll listen much have a seat. Thanks. I was going to call you later, Kate. I tried you for hours last night. Yeah, I wasn't answering my phone. I'm sorry about my grandmother. Just have to work out plan B. No, because plan A is still in effect. My dad is going to make sure you get a lab and all the privileges you deserve. He is furious with my grandmother. I don't want to make an enemy of your grandmother, Kate. Oh, she'll get over it. And in the meantime, you can get back to work. You mean we can get back to work? Uh, listen, you know, I really should get back to the banner. Why don't I let you two talk? <laughs> I'm sorry that I interrupted you. No, no, that's right. Listen, I had to get back anyway. Patrick, I will call you later. Bye. Mm. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Now, you were reacting with absolute shock at my proposal that we work together again? Well, we have never worked in a lab together before. But we were planning to when we got back from Africa. I just don't know what uh, I'm going to be doing in the immediate future, that's all. I... Sure you do. You're going to get married to court, and then you're going to go off on a honeymoon. But you've got to come back sometime. Yeah. I mean, don't tell me you've given up your commitment to science. I never said that. You're jumping to conclusions. Well, why don't you tell me what Kate Sanders is up to these days? You know, p from my perspective, Kate, it appears that you're about ready to become a housewife and just to hell with your profession. So, no problem at all, Perkins. Fine, go ahead and do it. As always, you're invaluable. Thank you. Hmm. You wanted to see me, Charles? Yes, Mother, are you feeling well? Perfectly fine, dear. Really? Then why are you acting so strangely? And what does that mean? That means that you seem to be delirious, imagining that Sanders Chemical doesn't have at least one little lab to allow a scientist of Patrick's caliber to work. What have you done? I've arranged it. Easily, simply. Perkins said it was no problem at all. How could you dare go over my head? 
I don't want that young man in the midst of our company. Why not? And don't give me the same bull you fed Kate about Patrick getting and interfering in between her and Cord. Why is that so difficult to believe? Because I know you, Mother, you would much prefer to have a Yale Ph.D. wasp in the family than a half-breed photographer. That's insulting, accusing me of being prejudiced. You know something? It's almost as if you were afraid to have Patrick involved with the company in any way. What is really behind this? No, for heaven's sake, for five years I thought he was dead. How could he possibly be a threat to me or the company? I don't know. I don't know, but you seem to be willing to play the fool in order to keep him out. Patrick has changed, Charles. If you don't see it, I do. And I predict bad news for Kate. If he's encouraged to hang around Landview. Oh, he's not going to be hanging around. He's going to be working very hard on his research project in a lab at Sanders Chemical. Listen, my dear rookie, do you really think I'm so stupid that I wouldn't know if Sandra was making the whole story up? I just have a hunch about this, okay? Maybe Sandra has given her husband reason to be jealous. Maybe she wants a divorce but is afraid to ask for one. All of a sudden, she's back in Landview. She sees you. She gets sentimental thinking about old times. Next thing you know, she's at the door with a tall tale. <laughs> you know, your jealousy is taking a new freakish turn, Cassie. John, there is just something wrong with this. She lies. She pretends. She doesn't even tell her husband about it. And I suppose she arranged to have that glitter ball fall and almost smash into both of them. Okay, I haven't worked all the details no. out yet. Well, you know what? I don't think that I want you working on this case with me anymore. In fact, is I know I don't. It's off limits to you from now on. Just consider the scenario a minute, would yeah. you? What do you do? Think of different ways to enrage me every day, Cassie? Sandra is a friend of mine. A very old, dear friend. Period. Now, I'm going out. Answer that. <sighs> John Russell, Private Investigations. Yes. Do you have any information about that death certificate? The mail? No, I haven't checked it yet. Uh, hold on, okay? Okay. Speed. Yes, I have it right here. Okay, if I have any questions, I'll let you know. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hmm. deal with this right now. I have to find myself another job. Because if I don't quit, John will just fire me. Maybe what I need is just a second job. I'm sorry, Kate. I didn't mean any of that. Look, it's true. I haven't worked in the last year or so between Jamie and my parents and Cord. I don't know. My career, it got lost. Don't you miss working? Of course I do. Then this project seems perfect for you. It's not a field project. You'll be staying right here in Landview. And Cord goes to work every day, doesn't he? Can't you? Of course I can. I hope you're not going to marry one of those uh, macho guys who thinks that the wife's place is in the home. No, he's cool about all that. It's just, we intended on having an extended honeymoon. Actually, now with his son, um... You don't know. You know. It seems to me your whole life's been put on hold because of his wife and his son. Kate, the truth is, I really need your help in reconstructing the research. I told you I had some of the formulas memorized. But you can save me a lot of time if you will help me find the missing pieces from the notes of our experiments together. Okay, but I might have to start and stop because of my marriage or the honeymoon or you whatever. You won't hear a peep out of me, okay? Thanks. I really appreciate it, and I hope this doesn't cause any problems with your fiance. Kate? Hi, hi. We were uh, just talking about you. Oh? Hey, Patrick, how you doing? Fine. Listen, uh, your dad told me where I could find you. I just want to let you know that my lawyer has talked to Tina's lawyer and everything is going very smoothly now. So things are going to work themselves out real soon. That is wonderful. Why don't we, um, why don't...